All right, ladies and gents, you might have seen, and if you have not seen, this is your first time hearing it, that there is another Age of Empires 2 expansion coming out. So I'm going to give my first take on everything that's happening. Um, keep in mind, I have known about this for a while, and I did ask Microsoft to be a little bit more transparent with communication and things to get excited about. Nice to hear that there's new DLC. I'm actually very happy with this, as long as everything pans out correctly. And I'll go over some of the things that I think should happen and I think will happen with these sieves. All right, so I'm not going to play this video. I'm going to link it in the description when this goes to YouTube. Just a quick little minute video that announces there will be three new civilizations as a part of the Dynasties of India expansion. And then also with that, that will rename the sieve we, has known, we have known excuse me, as Indians for many years. Um... I'm not going to read everything here, but I'm going to mainly focus on those civilizations. But first, I'll read this. Three new civilizations for you to master and challenge your friends. Haha, <laughs> you think I have friends. Uh, each including new unique units and technologies. Battle your way through three new campaigns spanning across India. Uncover betrayals and reclaim your lands while immersing yourself in the stories of history. Earn 23 new. Yeah, don't care about that. Okay, so this is going to be released on April 28th, it also says it is available to pre-order. I think it's $10, uh, might be location-based, just in case you're on the fence and you wanna maybe decide between buying a really, really good sandwich, that's a big sandwich, and the DLC or something. Um, the first of the three civilizations is the Bengalis. What we wanna focus on here are unique units, and I like to focus on civ bonuses. However, it does seem like it puts some information here so let's go through it um the megali unique unit is the ratha a sturdy chariot that can switch between melee and range attack modes um the bengalis focus on elephant and naval units so we'll have another elephant base sieve a uh, bengali elephants in addition to benefiting from a strong technology tree more resistant to anti-elephant bonus damage than those of other civilizations in addition their attack speed can be boosted by researching the unique technology Ikes, I probably mispronouncing that, which also improves Rathas. The galley ships regenerate hit points, increasing their longevity. These strengths are built on the back of a strong economy. Um, the galley town centers automatically spawn additional villagers when each next age is reached, and the Bengalis can support a large economy after researching the unique technology Mahayana, which reduces the amount of population space that each villager takes up. Finally, Sheesh. Bengali trade units and those of their allies generate food in addition to gold, and that is accumulated during each trip to and from the allied market. All right, so read some of these bonuses here. This is, this is actually repeating some of the things that I just said, and I'm going to say this. It sounds strong. It sounds like maybe some of the other civilizations that have been introduced, where they come in hot and heavy, People make pay-to-win jokes, and then they get settled down a little bit. I don't know if that's actually going to be the case, but I think if you're looking at new civilizations being introduced to AOE 2, you have to think how good is their eco and their economy. This does depend on how cheap the unique techs are. seems strong. So the trade aspect, I actually really like. That's my favorite bonus I've heard because I think that that kind of shakes up how you can play the late game in Age of Empires. Not only for you, but also for your allies. So I actually think that is really cool. Um, so I, I, that's my favorite bonus of everything. I will say that with things like elephants, it is a slippery slope between being seen all the time and extremely broken or something that you, you rarely see. So that's going to be something that the devs really are going to have their work cut out for them on. If their eco is too strong and their elephants are too strong, they're going to have to nerf it. And if it's not good at all then they're going to have to buff it that's tricky so i hope it says they have a good tech tree hopefully their other options are good as well um and then i think bengalis will be pretty solid um also i i like how there's no gimmicks like honestly i like how there's no like instant this i'm not a big fan of ships regenerating hp i personally would have preferred to see regenerating of hp on ships to be behind a technology I think that makes a little more sense, but, you know, overall, we'll see when we see that tech tree. Uh, moving on. Uh, okay, this is the same exact thing. Excuse me. Oh, it says 15 HP per minute, by the way. 
It also says you get two villagers when the next age is reached. This seems strong. Uh, but potentially competitive. All right. The Dravidians is the next civilization. Those ships look amazing. I want to hear about them. I hope it's not just a scenario thing. I hope we can actually play with this. Um, seize control of the lucrative Indian Ocean trade routes and utilize advanced metallurgy as you build one of the wealthiest sea empires of medieval Asia. The unique unit for this civilization is the Yurumi Swordsman, a warrior wielding a scathing flexible sword. In the Thirisade, a massive vessel that dominates the high seas. So yeah, that would be the massive vessel. And then the unique unit out of the castle is the small-ish swordsman, which we'll also get footage of on screen with what we can. So it's an infantry and naval civilization. Cheaper barrack technologies. Supplies. A strong technology tree. It says it's a devastating unique unit. And the unique technology, which causes infantry and cavalry attacks to ignore armor of enemy units. Oh, I don't like the ignore armor thing. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I know Latus already have that. Um, it is hidden behind a technology here, whereas in the case of the Latus for the Lithuanians, it just happens all the time for that unit. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, make Dravidian infantry amongst the most formidable in the game. I am okay with better infantry. And so let's let's look at some of the other things. I'm actually going to skip past the paragraph and just look here. They receive plus 200 wood when advancing to the next stage. What? Okay, my question for right off the bat is, what if you click up to the next stage and then cancel it and then click up again? Does, I, that seems like a bug that they probably would fix by the time this is released. But feels easily abusable if that is possible. Hopefully it's not the case. This is, this is like a lot of wood at a really crucial time. Think about what you would want to do normally while you're on the way to the next stage. You want a barracks. So that's like a free barracks, right? So I don't like plus 200 a lot, but it does come back to their options too. Like if they don't have a lot of strong options, it does depend. Their fishermen and fishing ships carry plus 15. I like this. Their barracks technologies cost minus 50%. I, I actually like this too. I like this a lot. Skirmishers and elephant archers attack 25% faster. I don't mind that either. Um, we will need to see stats on some of these things. Again, this is first just the first read-through. I should probably be faster with this. But you've got the warship that fires multiple projectiles. It says it's strong versus warships. I would have to see, you know, how does this do against demos? How does this do against fast fire? How does this do against galleons, caravels, whatever? Armored Elephant Unique Unit. Oh, so out of their stable. Anti-Building Cavalry Unit. Resistant to most ranged attacks. Weak first melee units. Cannot be converted by monks from distance. Okay, and the, the infantry unit has a charge attack too for... Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. If you can use ranged units against these elephants, you have to go melee. And this thing, this thing might be really good against melee. So, this is an elephant ram. Oh, you guys are telling me it's an elephant ram. That's fine, then. That's fine. I don't mind that. Elephant ram sounds pretty dope. But, like, think of the combination, though. I actually really like that, because then you have infantry combined with a bit of, like, ram power. I like it. That's cool. I, I actually, I like the flow of the civilization, I'm always a little hesitant just off personal things of like plus 200. That might need to be tweaked. Uh, the charge attack, the, um, the ignoring armor. Those are the things that are a bit unique for our game and just it doesn't fit as well with me because I'm an old boomer. But I think overall this should be fine. And we'll, we'll see. Also, this team bonus, people are going to be like, wow, that's a really dumb team bonus. If this sieve is good on water, this is an amazing team bonus. Like, if this Civ is a go-to on most team game water maps, this is so nice. <laughs> this is so nice. Okay. The Gurjaras, excuse me. It's probably Gurharas. I uh, did zero work on learning pronunciations, but we're just going to move along here. 
Uh, we're going to read through this civilization. So far, so good on paper with these civs, I'd say. Uh, ride swift mounts across the fertile fields and open plains of western India and unleash diverse armies of sturdy warriors upon your enemies. The Grahara unique units are the Shivermish Rider, a speedy cavalry unit that can dodge enemy attacks. And the Chakram Thrower, a infantry unit that unleashes volleys of deadly metal discs. Yes! As a kid, he used to use those little styrofoam discs guns. You guys ever use those? These little styrofoam discs with a gun, and you, you pull the trigger and it like it flies across the room. I know it's not going to be a gun, but I just love the idea of metal discs being thrown. I love it. Also, I really like the... Um, What's it called? I really like the Gabetto of the Malians, and I think it's underused. Or maybe they're just a bit weak. So I like the idea of more like infantry-ish units that throw things. Um, the Gaharas also begin the game with a Camel Scout instead of Scout Cav, and can train more Camel Scouts starting in Feudal. That's interesting. I really need to see the, the line of sight, HP, attack on that. Because if that means that they can always win a scout fight in a 1v1 in Dark Age, that changes things. Uh, Gaharas focus on cavalry and camelry. Their mounted units deal additional bonus damage against the enemy units that they counter. Okay, so additional bonus damage. While their camelry and elephants and those of their teammates also train faster. Hmm, okay. Gahara camelry also benefit from additional armor once the unique technology Frontier Guards is researched. Okay, so, so they've separated cavalry and camelry here, which means that Frontier Guards, at least based on what this is, says, does not apply to the other cavalry units. I believe that's what that means. Normally, if I saw a bonus that applies to cavalry, it would apply to the camels as well, so I'm not 100% certain on how that is distinguished there. It's interesting to me that it talks about how good the unique unit is. You know how the descriptions say, like, it focuses on this and this, and then, like, they're actually good at something else? It could be that type of situation. Uh, they also benefit from a variety of useful economic bonuses. Now, this is the kicker, my friends. This is the key stuff for all those people out there who play three-hour no-attack games. The eco bonuses don't matter as much to you guys. The units and how cool they are and how strong they are, that's what a lot of people fight for in those types of games. But in terms of competitiveness and balance... This is the kicker. It doesn't necessarily matter as much of what you can do. It's how you can get there. Um, it says they begin the game with two additional forge bushes near their town center. Okay, so that would be one... I think that's 250 food. Uh, they can garrison livestock instead or inside of mills to slowly but indefinitely generate food instead of slaughtering them with villagers. Okay, uh, Gurhara docks can be garrisoned by fishing ships. Can be garrisoned by fishing ships? Allowing theirs and those of their allies to take refuge from under attack. Is, is that supposed to say fishing ships can garrison inside the docks? I just want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. The docks are garrison. Oh, can be garrisoned. Oh, no, that's said correctly, actually. That's said correctly. That's fine. Uh, I, I misread that. Um, finally, researching the unique technology, um, uh, the thing I'll work on, reduces the food cost of all military units, making them more affordable and easy to mass. So I don't think their eco is that strong because of the forage bushes. I actually really like the forage bush bonus because if you think about it, 250 extra food Compared to Mongols bringing in food 40% faster. Compared to Tatars having 50% more food on their sheep. That's not, that's not that crazy. And I, I also, I paused when I read this. But I actually like the bonus about garrisoning livestock inside mills to slowly but indefinitely generate food. Because that is a trade-off, right? If you garrison them to generate food in the long term you are not able to take it right away with villagers. So it depends on how much that food is. Like if, if this is really strong, I could see maps where there's a lot of extra like sheep and whatnot being a problem. But if I, 
myself as like a tournament host and map maker, I have to factor that in a little bit. And I think it would be really cool strategically to say, wow, like this person isn't taking it now. They're putting it inside of their mills because this map is Yucatan or whatever. So this, the economic bonuses here, I like, I'm not a big fan of docking. I, I'm really not a fan of garrisoning fishing ships. That's the only thing. If you think of how water meta is, a lot of builds are surrounding pressuring fish. I guess, though, if you're garrisoning your fishing ships, it's not that big a deal, actually, because if you garrison your fishing ships, you're not working with them. So it's like, you still got to make Navy anyways. That's fine. That's fine. That's unique. I, I guarantee you, I'm going to say it right now. There is going to be a bug, okay? There is going to be a bug. I am calling it. Because making fishing ships garrisonable inside of docks just feels like bug city. There was a bug back in the day when Khmer were introduced where you could garrison villagers inside Khmer houses. And there was a bug for years until it got addressed where anyone that wasn't Khmer could literally attack with their houses. And I want to see some people in chat say, I didn't know that, if you didn't know that. Yeah, you could, if someone was attacking your house because of the Khmer introduction, you could right-click those units and it would slowly attack them. The house would attack. So I'm just waiting for the bug to, to stem from this. <laughs> and if I had more footage of the house attack thing, I would try and get it into a video. Okay. A Gurhara unique infantry unit with ranged melee attacks, strong versus infantry, weak versus archers. Infantry units are like pretty niche in our game. I'm really happy that they added more infantry unique units. Um, I'm glad that they're incentivizing a bit more um, play with infantry. I'm glad, I'm especially glad that they weren't like with Sicilians like, hey, let's start off with infantry and let's just completely back out of that idea. I guess maybe they will still, and give them strong knights. I'm really happy that they, they seem to put a lot of thought and, and uh, everything into this. Camel Scout is something we'll have to see. You know, the Armored Elephant, it seems to also be available here. We'll have to see how that works. The unique techs, I think, are pretty reasonable. I don't, I'm not sure I like the plus four melee armor. I mean, we'll have to see what, what upgrades they get. Um, but moving along, guys, there will be new campaigns. I was just saying this is really important for the game. Listen, $10 for three new civilizations and campaigns. $10 is different for everyone out there, but to me, that is pretty reasonable. Um, I actually think that's good. I don't know if the campaigns are actually going to be good. I've tried a lot of the new ones. Some of them are great. Some of them are not. But um, I like the fact that they, they haven't said... They haven't completely forgotten that Age of Empires 2 is built on the backs of a lot of single player players who played those campaigns back in the day. And then they added some achievements. Uh, this is not something that I really get into too much. Um, that's not something we're going to talk about. But here you have uh, the final thing is the, the Hindus, uh, Hindustanis, and they were previously the Indians. And I'm going to see if they made any tweaks. But what's good is you're able to play this civilization without buying the new DLC, okay? So if you don't want to get these new Indian civilizations, you're, I guess what's going to happen is Indians is just going to change for you. So Indians is just going to change, and it's going to have this here. Um, and as far as I can see with a quick glance, oh, they have actually made some tweaks here as well. Cara, Caravan Sere. Aha. Uh -huh. The Tagni's there. They changed the name of this. Grand Trunk Road. They changed the name of what used to be. Why did they do this to me, man? Get the first name right. Don't make me say it for three years and then change it. God, I even forget what it was, to be honest. So whatever it was has now been changed. They get a unique building now. Economic buildings, heals and increases speed of trade carts in a 10 tile radius. <laughs> that actually, wait, what? Oh God, bro. <laughs> oh God. I just can't wait to see super speedy trade cards. <laughs> oh, how fast does it get? Um, a lot of people here are saying, hey, look at the tech tree and do all this. 
um, and, and like dive deeper. I'm going to save my deeper dive for some of this stuff for future content. I know that the faster the video, uh, the more I go over the most important things, the better it is for people to be able to listen to it. So that's basically it. We've got a new DLC coming out apparently April 28th. Now I'm going to check real quick. See, Microsoft kind of helped me in the past to be able to have a link on Humble Bundle uh, where you guys can buy the game with my code and it some of it goes towards me. The problem is every single time there's an addition to the game, it's not on Humble Bundle until like months later. And what that means is you guys already want to play it and you already have it. And believe me, I want you guys to have the game. So that's completely fine with me. I... It's pennies, but it's always something. I'm just checking real quick. Um, there is a link out there. I don't really advertise it much. You know, I, I want you guys to play the game, watch the content, whatever. But yeah, there's no link there. Um, but, you know, if you ever want to check that out, I'll try and maybe get into the descriptions or whatever. That's about it. I think this is going to be good for the game. I do feel as though there's going to be um, some balance things we're going to have to tweak out. As long as it's not too insane, as long as we don't have an old cumin situation, if you guys remember those days, I'm okay with there being some imbalances. Um, and I, I think that this is good for the game. The final thing I'm going to say, okay, and I know so many of you guys are like, content, 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 sieves, sieves, take my money, take my money. I know you guys. I know new content's great. First off, it's amazing that we're still having more content made for the game. That is really good for the game, okay? That's awesome. But what I, what I would love, what the dream is, guys, is for there to be actual improvements for the game as well. I understand from Microsoft their business. And I understand there's enough people waving that money around like, give me these sieves right now. But the dream is to get these sieves and then to also have improvements to the game. We need like proper queuing systems for our team games. We need the lobby system to be improved. There's things I'm going to make videos about. So I hope that with a DLC, we're also going to see improvements to the game to make the, the playing, casting, everything experience better overall. Because this is like, I don't know about you guys. This is the only game for me. I want this game to be as good as possible for as long as possible going forward. So that is my final thing. Happy to see this. I hope my little tidbits and uh, reading of the civilizations helped in some ways. And for full transparency, because a lot of you guys were probably like, well, T90 didn't even seem to know about this. I spent limited time months ago, limited time with these civs behind the scenes, but not as much as I will over the next few weeks. Um, I'm someone who I don't like to spend a lot of time and energy on things that are not completed, not near finished. And I've, I also, quite negatively perhaps, have given enough input on things that have not been listened to where I'm just like, okay, let's see what you guys are going to do. <laughs> and then we'll give the input after the fact. So that's, that's kind of how I've been with the new DLC behind the scenes. The next couple weeks will be a flurry. And uh, I'll be giving as much input as I can and getting as much content out to you guys as well. In particular, casted content. I think that'll be awesome.